So if you guys know me, you know there is a franchise that I hold near and dear to my heart right after Halloween. That is Hellraiser. It's a series that doesn't get enough attention because of all the straight-to-video sequels. Today, I wanted to make my case for what the best Hellraiser film is. Hey, what's up everybody? Nick here, and today I wanted to talk about my favorite Hellraiser movie and the movie that I think is the best one in the series. But before we get started, I wanted to piggyback off of what I said at the beginning of this video. Look, it's no secret to me that Hellraiser is not a fan favorite franchise. It just isn't. If you love it, you really love it. But for a lot of people, it's not one they find themselves visiting a lot because it has such a troubled history. Look, the Hellraiser franchise was truly in hell for years, with low-budget, straight-to-DVD sequels that hardly even featured Pinhead, and half the time were scripts that were doctored from original ideas into Hellraiser movies. And it was just a mess overall. Now look, there's a couple in there that aren't that bad, but for the most part, it was an era for the franchise that a lot of fans would probably like to forget. But before all that, before all of the craziness that happened with the Weinsteins and Dimension and the property itself, there were four movies in this series that really kind of put Pinhead on the map. And those movies, for most people, are varying levels of good to great. But of the first four movies, I feel like there is one clear winner. And that is Hellbound, Hellraiser 2. Now... I know a lot of people are going to sit here right now watching this video and say, absolutely not, the original is the best movie. I'm not really going to argue all that much with you about that because I understand why people love that movie so much. I love that movie too. But I just think that Hellbound does everything the first film does and does it a little bit better. See, what was the draw for Hellraiser? What was the thing about the first movie that really kind of roped you in? Well, one, Doug Bradley as Penhead was iconic. He embodied the role. There was something seductive, yet absolutely terrifying. And there was pain. Just pain around him and the Cenobites. The character, the design, the dialogue, they were all so memorable and they really got under your skin. On top of that, you had this idea of pleasure and pain mixing. Eternal pleasure and pain? Question mark? To the Cenobites, that pain has become pleasure. But to us, mortals, as we get taken to their realm, that is pain. Pain and torture forever. And these aren't demons from the biblical hell. It's like another dimension, another type of hell, another form of hell. And the only way to experience it is to go there and find out for yourself. But once you're there and Pinhead's got you, you're not getting out. There was a lot about that first movie that was just really unique. We hadn't seen a you know, major motion picture at that time that really kind of delved into this sadomasochist sexual themes. It wasn't something that you really saw. This movie did it and did it in spades. And it was gross and grimy and at the same time sexy and you couldn't take your eyes off of it. But because of the odd nature of that film and it having a smaller budget, they weren't able to realize everything that they would have liked to have in that first movie. Now that's not to say there's not some incredible effects in that movie, because there truly are, that still stand the test of time today. But luckily for us, with the success that was Hellraiser, Hellbound would come not long after. And because of the success of the first film, there was more money to play with. And with that, they gave us a movie that was grander in every sense of the word. First and foremost, Ashley Lawrence is so much better in this movie. And that's not to say that she's not good in the first movie, because she is. But it's not really her movie. However, in the second film, it is her movie, and Ashley shows that she has the chops to be up there with some of our favorite final girls. And this is coming from someone that loves Sidney Prescott and Laurie Strode. But I'm telling you right now, Kirstie Cotton in Hellbound, she is right up there. Also, you actually get to dive into Leviathan, the Labyrinth. 
you get to see things that the first movie alluded to and your mind would go places wanting to see that. This movie really gets into the fantastical and I like that a lot because this world, especially with what was teased in the first movie, it should be a little fantastical. It doesn't need to be totally grounded in reality. And I like how the second movie really starts to visualize that. Sure, there's some 3D matting and whatnot in this movie that's not great and you would probably love to see modern versions of this film. But for the time, it was good and I don't mind. Getting to actually visualize some of that stuff was actually really cool. And I think it's some of the stuff that stands out about this movie. And to that point, Dr. Shenard is such a great character. See, in the first movie, you had Frank. You had the Cenobites. You also had a human bad. There were a couple different plot lines at play there that would eventually merge. Hellbound does the same thing while keeping Penhead and Frank to a lesser degree, but also adding Dr. Shenard. And Dr. Shenard is just deliciously evil. Like, so interested in this world and in these beings that he gets consumed by it. And his transformation scene is like the stuff of a 90s kid's dream. Like, I remember movies and TV shows that did stuff like that that was so weird and so out there. But you just kind of went for it. And you were like, yes, like, let's get weird. Let's experiment. And that's what happens here. And it all goes into, like I said earlier, about really exploring the world, seeing Leviathan, seeing the labyrinth, seeing their dimension. That was really cool. So I felt like they really played that up a lot here. But one of the greatest things this movie does is more of a focus on Pinhead. Now that's not to say that he is the main character, because he's not. But I feel like he has more to do in this movie. And maybe that's because we play in their world a lot more. Maybe it's because Doug Bradley was getting more comfortable in the role. Maybe the budget was bigger, so the effects were better. I don't know what it is. It's probably a little bit of everything that comes together to make such a better performance and a character that adds even more gravitas than he had in the first movie. I love his merry band of demons, okay? I always have. But let's not kid ourselves. Pinhead is the draw for us. You add up all of those things together. You add up an incredible directing job by Tony Randall and amazing music by Christopher Young, even better than the first films. And what you have is a movie that's damn near flawless. Like I said, if you want to go back and you want to nitpick some of the special effects, specifically when you're talking about, you know, their dimension and the labyrinth, Leviathan, whatever, I understand that. But at the time, I don't think those stood out as much. And even for someone, you know, like me today watching it, it doesn't really bother me. Can you notice it objectively that it's not the strongest stuff in the movie? Of course. But it doesn't really matter because if the movie has brought you along for the ride, you understand the limitations this movie had when it was being made. And you understand that it's really just about being introduced to this stuff. It wasn't going to be the greatest, but we finally got it visualized. And that matters a lot. Everything about Hellbound is Hellraiser on steroids. It keeps the exact same tone and style of the first film while also being more grandiose in the ways that it needed to. It gives much more to do to its lead characters, including Claire Higgins. It has incredibly graphic material, stuff that'll make you just squirm. I look no further than the mattress scene. You know what I'm talking about if you've seen the movie. It's just a phenomenal movie. Look, like I said from the beginning of this video, if you prefer other movies in the Hellraiser franchise, I'm not going to tell you you're wrong, because I think there's a lot of solid movies in this series. I love this series. Having said that, I think Hellbound is the best one, and I think for all of those reasons I mentioned, and many more, that's why. I'm also realizing as I'm wrapping up this video that I didn't wear my Hellraiser shirt while doing this, and I feel like a complete dumbass. But I want to hear what you guys think down below in the comment section. Do you think that Hellbound is the best Hellraiser film? If not, which one is and why? And if you agree, why do you love it? What is it about this movie that stands above the rest? I want to hear down below from you all. Please leave a like on this video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. We just recently broke 6K. Thank you guys so much for your support. It really means the world to me. I thank you all so much. It's been crazy to see my channel flourish in recent years compared to where I was, so I'm very much appreciative of that. But thank you guys so much for watching. This is Nick at the Lost River Drive-In, and I'm pulling out.